Whoa, buddy, my name is Shutik, and I can't stop playing with my bean whistle. In my increasingly unhinged effort to build every classic amplifier ever, I realized that I was missing something. With all my focus on tube distortion, I had neglected to find something with big, pristine cleans. Thank God that's not a problem anymore because I made this, the Chariotone Haywatt 504. Based on the Haywatt DR504, this amp offers up massive amounts of clean headroom and is single-handedly the best pedal platform I've ever encountered. With the 504, you don't even need an effects loop. This bad boy sounds amazing with reverb and delay being fed directly into the input. When you go the high watt route, you'll find that the two most popular models are the 100 watt DR103 and the 50 watt DR504. At 50 watts, the 504 gets loud enough to make your butthole vibrate. I took it outside to see how loud it can get and I could visibly see the grill cloth moving. Most of us won't need any more volume than the 50 watt provides, but if you do need it, Chariotone also has a Haywatt 103 kit. Just remember, all the legendary guitarists who used 103s are partially deaf now. The fun thing about high watt style amps is they aren't derivative of a Marshall or Fender design. They're entirely their own thing. High watts are known for a very articulate and fast response with uniquely rich third and fifth order harmonics. The 504 utilizes a solid state rectifier, three 12AX7 preamp tubes, a 12AT7 phase inverter, and two EL34 power tubes. Today we're going to do a quick rundown of the 504's controls and go over a few tips that should help ensure a successful build. After that I'll cover a few things that will help with your initial startup procedure. I'll pepper in musical arrangements highlighting the 504 throughout the video. To wrap things up we'll talk about who this amp is for. Not to spoil the ending or anything, but I think this amp has something to offer nearly every type of guitarist. I really want you to hear this thing. Let's start with something that shows how well the amp takes pedals. I'm using a UA Golden to simulate some Floydy reverb, and I'm plugged into the normal channel. And don't worry, I'll be demoing the amp without effects later in the video. <laughs> Controls on the 504 are fairly standard, so I'll keep things brief. You have two sets of inputs, with normal on the left and bright on the right. Low impedance inputs are on the top row. These provide a more mellow sound. High impedance inputs are on the bottom row and have a hotter sound. Each of the inputs has their own volume control. Your bass, treble, middle, and presence controls apply to both channels. The presence control is used in conjunction with the treble to set the overall high frequencies. It operates in the negative feedback portion of the circuit. There's a master volume that sets the overall volume of the amp. On the back, you have two speaker outs, an impedance selector, and test points for biasing the amp. Over here is your fuse section. There's one fuse for the mains and one for B+. B+, is also known as high tension in British. 
Like many other four holes or four input amps, you can jumper the channels. This gives you a fuller, more richer sound. David Gilmore was all about jumping channels. He actually had his Hi-Watt DR103 modded so that the channels were linked internally, eliminating the need for a jumper cable. Historically, I haven't been a huge fan of jumped channels, but I gotta admit, on the DR504, it sounds pretty awesome. Here's a little something with a jumper setup. I'm plugged directly into the high normal channel and the low normal and high bright are linked. I'm essentially using the normal channel as my primary input and blending in the bright to taste. The Haywatt 504 is a straightforward, intermediate build. You'll need to take your time with the lead dress to make sure yours looks as good as all the other 504s you've been salivating over online. Like other Tria Tone builds, you can order either a partial or complete kit. I opted for the complete kit which includes the output and power transformers. That kit includes a Prometheus power transformer and output transformer. They're well built and they sound great. I've never owned anything above 22 watts, and this is some serious iron. The PT and OT weigh in at roughly 12 kilograms or 26 and a half pounds. Between the transformers, the rest of the parts, and a cabinet, you're looking at a 45 pound head. Before getting started with the build, you'll want to do yourself a favor and print a copy of the wiring diagram found on the Triatone website. It's super handy to have on hand while you work. As a side note, at the input section of the amp, you'll notice a black circle with red and green wires on the wiring diagram. This is the coax cable. You only want to connect this to ground on one side. Cut the shielding away from the side which isn't grounded and apply some heat shrink to reduce the chances of a little whisker shorting something out. The kit includes two turret boards for you to work with. I'd recommend that you wipe the turrets down with some isopropyl alcohol or acetone to make sure that they're nice and clean before you start placing components. Otherwise, you may have a hard time soldering to them. I found that soldering the turrets required substantially more heat than anticipated. I was consistently working at around 800 degrees. When you're soldering with this kind of heat, make sure that you work quickly. Joints should look nice and shiny once they've cooled. When it comes to turrets, you can either wrap around the post or insert through the hole on top. When you wrap a component, make sure that you don't exceed three quarters of a turn around the post. If you wrap more than that, you'll have a very difficult time removing the component for replacement or in the event you've made a mistake. After putting a total of 10 hours on the amp, I turned it off and went about my day. I came back, turned it on, and flipped out a standby and nothing. The amp was dead quiet. After some troubleshooting, I realized that the 100 ohm 5 watt dropping resistor had failed. My understanding is that this is not uncommon and many users replace this with a slightly higher wattage resistor. I spoke with Nick at Chariotone and he recommended anything up to 10 watts. The trick is finding something that will fit nicely. I opted for a 100 ohm 6.5 watt resistor from DigiKey as the replacement. Hey everybody, it's me Shootik from the future. And I just want to let you know that Nick wrote me to tell me that all of the kits now include a 7 watt 100 ohm dropping resistor, so you're going to be good to go. Props to Chariotone for continuous improvement.
Wiring the input section can get a little hairy if you try to complete the task while it's inside the chassis. Looking back on this, I think the easiest way to wire it would be to install the input jacks on the outside of the chassis and wire them to each other there. If you choose to do it this way, make sure you connect everything so it's wired correctly when it's mounted on the inside of the chassis. The heaters run from the PT to this power tube here. Make sure these are wired to the next power tube in phase. From the second power tube here, run one set of wires along the side of the chassis up to the pilot light. A second set of wires will head up to the V3 preamp tube here. As a side note, from what I can glean, the preamp tubes are not numbered in order. Here's a wiring diagram for a 504 from HiWatt.org, which depicts the wiring layout and numbering. I twisted my heaters by clamping two wires to a table on one end and then twisting them from the other. Make sure they are nice and tight without bunching up. Inside of a vintage high watt, you'll find some of the most beautiful and tidy wiring you've ever seen. It's not just pretty though. This kind of craftsmanship will make sure this amp is functional decades after you build it. Getting the lead dress nice is entirely achievable, but it'll require some patience. There were plenty of times that I wired something, looked at it, and thought, it's functional, but it could look better. Then I would begrudgingly desolder the wire and then do it better. Remember folks, you can tell something is the right thing to do if it's the biggest pain in the ass out of all of your options. This applies to all things in life. On the back side of the amp, things are labeled using Dymo labels. Be careful not to bend them or else they turn white. You can prevent any sort of bending by gently peeling them with either your fingernail or a razor blade. For my speaker, I'm using a 12 inch Ross and Sparfield Starfinder. This is the closest modern production speaker to the Fane Crescendo on the market. The speakers are even magnetized on the machine that was used by Fane in the 60s and 70s. This speaker has a bass resonance of 70 Hz and a frequency response from 30 Hz to 16,000 Hz. The speaker has a 2 inch voice coil and is rated for 100 watts. It sounds amazing. Everything in this video was recorded using the Starfinder. For the power tubes, I'm using some new old stock said winged C EL34s. My preamp tubes are pre-owned US made 12AX7s of various makes. The pre-owned 12AX7s can sound pretty great, but you need to order them from someplace that will accept returns. I've received quite a few that sound terrible. If you don't want the hassle, just get new stock, low noise and low microphonics tubes. It'll sound great either way. Here's a nice little ditty using just the normal channel. The initial startup procedure is the same as it is for almost any guitar amp. Check out my video on the Tweed Deluxe 5E3 to get a general feel for the different steps and order of operations. That video covers testing your power transformer, heaters, and plate voltages. Just keep in mind that the voltages in the 504 will be different from that of the 5E3. The voltages for the 504 can be found on the Triatone website at the bottom of the product page. If you'd like to see a full testing and biasing procedure video for the Haywatt 504, leave a comment below and I can try to whip one up. I want to talk about two things I learned during this build that can be helpful for amplifier builds in general. First, I noticed something interesting during my initial startup procedure. Before installing my tubes, I attempted to check the plate voltages on the preamp tubes and I found that the voltages there were the same as the power tubes. Without any tubes installed, there's no load and you'll see the same numbers across all plates. I didn't know that. 
Second, after my initial voltage check, I installed the tubes and plugged in the speaker. When I powered the amp up and flipped the standby switch to the on position, I was met with an extremely loud, howling, sci-fi squealing noise. This got the adrenaline pumping big time. I flipped the power switch to the off position and disconnected the amp from the wall immediately. I did a little research on the old Google machine and started to see similar experiences from amp builders who had their OT plate wires backwards. I reached out to Nick at Choreatone who replied to my email and confirmed this in under 10 minutes. Nick is an absolute legend. I swapped the wires and the next time I flipped the standby switch, I was met with the very quiet, pleasant, barely audible ocean noise that I would expect for a tube amp. You might want to keep these wires a little long until you reach this step of your testing. If everything goes well, you can trim the wires to fit and re-solder. If you end up with things backwards and get the spooky sci-fi noise, you'll have enough wire to make the switch cleanly. In my case, I had to extend the blue wire that had already been trimmed to fit. The DR504 is an absolute beast when it comes to clean tones. It's also the best pedal platform I've ever used. When it comes to pedals, the only things that come close are amps with a dedicated effects loop. As always, the Tria Tone kit was a blast to build, and it allowed me to get my hands on a classic at a fraction of the cost. All the components in the kit are high quality and sure to stand the test of time. This thing is a real delight to play. It's extremely responsive and it just feels good. I was also surprised that I was able to get a solid tone out of it at a reasonable volume without the use of an attenuator. I don't want to paint too rosy a picture about this. The amp is a little on the loud side, but I found it to be totally manageable as long as you aren't sitting directly in front of the cabinet. Your wife, kids, roommates, cats, or dogs might not feel the same. I'd recommend this rig for clean players, pedal fanatics, and recording artists. If you plan on gigging with it, you better be in good shape. This thing is heavy. For those looking to push their amp into tube distortion or play at whisper quiet volumes, this probably isn't the one for you. I give the Churia Tone Haywatt 504 one of those fancy medals that the queen gives her knights. My guy Eric loves a blender of a bender. He taps into his stash. And it's not funny when my money winds up missing. I'll beat it out.